This is a map of Paris. It might not look like a map, because it's not a map you're supposed to see. It's a map that you feel with your hands. And it's a centuries-old technology, a way of acquainting someone who's blind or visually impaired to a new environment. And if you think about the technologies that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, you're probably looking at a screen, whether that's on your laptop, your smartphone, or your tablet. You're checking emails, notifications, messages, and alerts. And a lot of this information is inaccessible to someone who's blind or visually impaired. Although we have access to a new era of voice-controlled interfaces, like Alexa, Siri, and the Google Assistant, these artificial intelligences that respond to our speech have also added another channel of interruption and intrusion. So if we're not looking at our computers, we talk at them. But communication involves a lot more than just words. Even if you're not bilingual, you all understand a second language. You understand the meaning of a handshake or a warm hug. You understand to pull your hand away from a hot stove. And you understand this faster than you can read the words printed on a page or hear them spoken out loud. For any of the 285 million people who are blind or visually impaired, a task as ordinary as checking the current time involves asking another person or pulling out your phone, turning up the volume, having it yell out that information. This is a cumbersome experience. And it's an accessibility problem. But I question the necessity of occupying anyone's eyes or ears when we can intuitively understand things that we grasp with our hands. When we design computer interfaces, we should listen to people who are blind, not just because they consume information through their sense of touch, but because solving that design problem can enable a future filled with tangible interfaces that we can feel. We will interact with software with the same efficiency as the knife and cutting board in our kitchens. And we can interact with each other online with the same expressiveness as a handshake or a hug. And just as we create animations by rolling through pictures at 24 frames per second, we can animate your sense of touch by moving sensations across your body in different patterns, shapes, and intensities. A crude example of this today would be the vibration you get from your cell phone, or maybe a tap you feel from your Apple Watch, telling you that you're receiving a phone call or a text message. This is called haptic feedback, technology that's communicating information through touch. But imagine if we treat your entire body as a programmable computer display. We can take a vibration or a linear force and modify it at different points, much like the pixels in a computer screen. So that Braille map implemented with today's technology could allow you to feel a left turn when you're getting close to an intersection as a sensation that moves to the left across your wrist. Or maybe if you're receiving a message from a friend, it feels like a gentle tap on your shoulder. In a future filled with haptic feedback, an anesthesiologist could feel the heartbeat of a patient during a surgery. A firefighter could feel the heat of a room long before they ever enter it. And the sensors on a robotic arm will become a natural extension of our own hands. A pair of eyeglasses began as an assistive device, a way of helping someone with low vision. But today, you could describe them as a fashion statement. Or they're a place where we embed cameras so you can take pictures and videos. 
They can even be a place where we project virtual objects for augmented reality and virtual reality. I've spent the last eight years working on systems of silent and invisible communication because I believe that the same technologies that could help someone who's blind check the time without needing a pair of headphones is the same technology that can power the future of human-computer interaction. And when I think about the intended meaning of the idiom, the blind leading the blind, it suggests a failure to grasp a larger meaning. The blind can not only lead the blind, but can lead those of us who can see to experiences that we've never seen before. Thank you. Thank you.